Let's talk about a theoretical sequel to Super Mario Odyssey, and what I'd like it to look like. Mario Odyssey is far and away my favorite Super Mario game, and as I've come to learn, many others will tell you the same thing. Some even call it objectively the single best entry in the mainline Mario series. I can't blame them either, it took the formula of all the past great 3D Mario games and combined their best elements. They then improved this amalgamation to create the spectacle we now have on the Switch. Everyone picked it up and loved it from the start. Casual players, speedrunners, and everyone in between. This includes myself. I have 100 percent of the game and also beaten it without jumping. Or at least, I tried my best. There is still something to be desired in a few aspects of the game, however, since, I mean, it is just a Mario game after all. In my opinion, a sequel could not only be an even better game, but also raise the original to a higher level in the eyes of the people than the level it already resides at. Which is still pretty high. I've had this idea in my head for a while now, so I feel the time to chat about it is now. One of the main areas of Odyssey that was a bit lackluster to some people, including myself, was the story. And this is also where I see the biggest opportunity for improvement in creating the indisputably greatest Mario game ever conceived. Actually, that may be a stretch, but you get my point. There is a great idea I have that will either make the game great or terrible, but I'm standing by it no matter what. Picture this. You open Mario Odyssey 2, as it will be called from here on out, for the first time. You get the same looking menu as you did in the original, with a start button and an option for assist mode, which would remain virtually unchanged as far as I can guess. Fade to black, like in the original. Fade into the final cutscene from Odyssey 1, the wedding chapel and Mario, Peach, and Bowser flying out of it to crash to Earth. Or Moon, rather. It plays through, but without the end sequence music the original had, until this moment when Mario footstools Bowser on the face. At this point, we cut to Bowser's perspective as he falls back down to the lunar surface as Peach and Mario, Cappy, and Tiara fly away aboard the Odyssey. He looks on in anger and resentment stuck on the moon. We then see him enter the underground moon cave we see in the original, or something along the lines of, ooh, Bowser doing shifty thing on moon, might want to remember that. Fade out to black again, then in to Mario and Peach landing in the Mushroom Kingdom to the applause and celebration of the folk of all the various kingdoms throughout the world. Here, after a bit of cutscene, Mario proposes and Peach accepts his offer. The crowd goes wild, literally in this case, and this is where the game begins, in the Mushroom Kingdom after the proposal is made. Of course, Mario needs to plan the wedding, right? Given what they had to go through to make all this happen, and that all of Bowser's wedding items he stole from other kingdoms have been returned, Mario is already scratching the bottom of the barrel. What does he, as anyone else would, think at this point? Wedding planners! And who do we know that plans weddings in the Mario universe already? You got it. The bad bunnies themselves, the Brutals. I feel like it would be awesome if we actually worked with the Brutals on this one rather than against them. After all, they seem to be good at their jobs. They acquired everything their client asked them to and set it all up in what I can't help but describe as a perfect location. The only issue is the morality with which they carried out these tasks, and this raises questions about how their morals are shaped. Do they often steal and commit crimes like we see in the first game, or are they simply following orders? We can never know until the second game, during which either we see the Brutals return as allies or potentially as the final bosses of the games themselves, acting out of vengeance or something. I don't know, but you get my point, right? The story would progress like so. Mario is in the Mushroom Kingdom, rather a slightly altered one, or perhaps a different one altogether that could just be described as a different location than Peach's castle. Toad Town is a potential candidate for this position. He runs about collecting moons to power up the old Odyssey once more to travel to a location, say the Luncheon Kingdom, to ask the leader of this location, again a different place in the Luncheon Kingdom than specifically Mount Volvano, if he can borrow some of their food for the wedding. Rather than accuse him of theft, as Bowser had been, they see a pleasant opportunity to provide their hero with something as thanks for turning their stupendous stew to Mount Volvano's citizens. As fans of the guy, they wish to see his capabilities one last time and leave some objectives for him to complete. His reward? Moons. Alternatively, they could just make Mario gather the ingredients for the food item he wishes to make for the wedding, and create it himself through a series of minigames. By minigames, I mean something like the RC car or volleyball in essence, but completely focused on mixing and baking or cooking a dish for the wedding. Naturally, each kingdom would cause Mario to run a few tasks that are unique to each kingdom, keeping the variety of the first game while upping the lasting fun value. Exploration, as in the first game, will be heavily emphasized by putting moons and hidden doors to sub-areas everywhere you might find one hiding away. 
As far as I care, Mario's controls would stay the same as well. Now, you may be asking something. What happened to Bowser on the moon? Well, he makes an appearance after completing a few kingdoms and sends a huge boss your way. By huge, I don't mean size necessarily, but prominent enough so that Mario has no choice but to fight. Likely, the kingdoms after which this does not happen will feature many bosses Mario must best to show he is worthy of the wedding element he has asked him to borrow. As for Bowser battles themselves, I would see something similar to Odyssey 1 in a big arena, varied attacks, and of course, punchy hat. We get a few of these throughout the game, maybe two or three, escalating in difficulty as the game proceeds. The final battle has to top the first game's escape, though, and I have a great idea as to how Odyssey 2 can do this. Bowser's is the final kingdom in the game this time. Same layout as before, but with changes in enemies, as well as a few structures added in. It will be difficult, but Mario will have no trouble. At the top, and after another Bowser battle, we see Bowser's project, a giant robot he can control from within. No way to harm him from outside that we can see. All is lost until the Brutals come to Mario's aid. Not in their little airship, either. Oh yes, I think you know where I'm going with this one. They touch down and invite Mario to help control the Mecha Brood. The final giant mech showdown Mario games have been sorely lacking since the 80s finally happens in Odyssey 2. Anyways, bam boom bop, Bowser dies the end. There is still a bit of playtime after the final boss, however, as Mario, Peach, and the whole wedding crew fly to the moon for the ceremony. The player gains control one last time as he gets to traverse Honeymoon Ridge one last time, enter the chapel for the first game, and walk down the aisle. Once he gets to the end, Peach comes in, and at this point it's basically a normal wedding. There is a Pianta officiating Give us Isle Delfino on Odyssey 2 Nintendo, I beg of you! And Toadsworth is delivering the bride. I mean, who else would? They say their I do's, put on their rings, and kiss. Pan up camera, fade to black, the end. So that's the story. What other things would be in Odyssey 2, though? Well, after I stopped marveling at that story I just fashioned from the first game basically being the prologue, I will say this. Basically, everything in terms of mechanics would be a carbon copy from Odyssey 1. I do, however, sympathize with a certain blue puppet who reviewed the game and think the motion controls could use a bit of reworking. Mapping buttons or input combos to the up and down throw would increase accessibility of the game for so many people, especially Switch Lite owners who can't detach their Joy-Cons. Nintendo does have to think about that market now, too. Also, I know that you can ground pound and press X or Y to down throw, but that only works on a ledge on the ground, and sometimes you just end up rolling anyways. Too complex, new inputs, please. Moons function the same as they always did, powering the Odyssey as well as being optional fuel for the ships of each of the Brutals to gather such things as tables, settings, and candles, or basically whatever else appears in a normal wedding. This will be required at multiple points to progress the story, but not all of these required side expenditures will be available as soon as the game begins. For instance, at the game's outset in Mushroom Kingdom, Topper will say he needs to go get, say, silverware to start, and he needs about five moons. At the same time, Mario needs to go to luncheon to get whatever he needs to get in there, and he needs 12 moons to get there in the Odyssey. Mario can go to luncheon just fine and complete the story within that kingdom, but he cannot leave until he satisfies Topper's requirement. Mario can, of course, travel back to Mushroom and give Topper the moons, and at that point he is free to proceed. This will, of course, happen in every kingdom with each bunny, and sometimes with multiple bunnies at once. The final boss will also be locked behind a moon goal, and all Brutals need moons to get things before you proceed. After the main story though, the Brutals won't need any moons or anything, it'd be like a normal game where you run around getting moons on all the kingdoms. After a certain amount of moons, special super hard kingdoms are unlocked like the dark side and darker side of the first game. I would like to see the player a bit more challenged than I found myself on darker side, which I personally consider to be pretty easy. And that's all my thoughts on this one. Anyways, I don't really know how else to end this, so I guess I'll murder this sad attempt at a transition and end it off here. If Nintendo ever decides to make a true sequel to Odyssey, now you know the ideas I would have about what it would look like. Since I can't think of anything better for this outro, thanks for watching, and goodbye I guess.